Thank you for joining us for Mental Health Awareness Month. So, Mr. Welcome. Kennedy, what makes Mental Health Awareness Month so important? Well, I think any any time you can bring attention to something that can be so commonly misunderstood, uh, people have a general idea. They're aware of mental health. They're certainly aware of the term mental illness, but beyond that, have a pretty limited understanding of what exactly that means in people's daily lives. And so anything that can kind of help highlight that, I think, is a good thing. Today, both online and in real life, it is not uncommon to hear people use mental illnesses adjectives, like saying, oh my gosh, that makes me OCD, or using disorders like schizophrenia as derogatory terms. What are some real symptoms and behaviors of people with OCD, bipolar disorder, and schizophrenia? I would agree those are terms that do kind of get casually thrown around as sometimes playful insults, sometimes harmful insults. But it's important to understand that there are people who are truly afflicted by those disorders. And <clears throat> at times, especially if you're one of those people, it can be offensive. Um, OCD specifically stands for Obsessive Compulsive Disorder. And it's a combination of a person who has an intense fear or worry about something that they can't seem to get rid of or that they obsess over. And then a compulsion or a behavior that they do in order to make that anxiety go away. Um, and for people with OCD, this is a, a cycle that they have a difficult time breaking and then affects their daily life. Uh, people with bipolar disorder, it's a mood disorder characterized by kind of incontrollable involuntary swings from extreme highs they called mania to extreme lows called depression. Um, and it's, it's the inconsistency of the, those switches and then the intensity of those that again prevents them from functioning in a normal capacity. And then the last one that people kind of commonly throw around, uh, schizophrenia, um, is a very different, slightly less common condition, about 1% of the population. And people with schizophrenia <clears throat> generally um, split from reality and suffer most commonly delusions and hallucinations or false beliefs about who they are or about what's happening in their life. And this condition is, I would say, far more severe in that it, it makes normal functioning far more difficult and generally requires some antipsychotic medications. Everyone feels sad and everybody gets nervous, but these feelings are often misquoted as mental illnesses such as anxiety and or depression. What's the difference between something like being sad after a breakup or getting nervous before math tests and actual anxiety or depression? The difference between what you described and, and actual anxiety and depression has to do with the intensity and the frequency and what you described is situational. A breakup is situational. A math test would be situational in regards to test anxiety. Um, depression you would find when it's something that's diagnosable you're going to see an increase in both frequency and intensity. That means it's going to be happening in several different situations. It could be happening at home by yourself. It could be happening in small social environments. It would be happening during class when there is no expectations to perform on a test, um, stuff like that. So when you see it happening uh, in many different uh, contexts, and you see it at higher levels. When those symptoms disrupt overall quality of life, then you're looking at a diagnosis rather than just it being a situation. From the perspective of someone who has studied psychology, what would you say are some misconceptions about mental illnesses? I think some of the greatest misconceptions in regards to mental illness is the severity. I think a lot of people feel that if I have mental illness, then I have something such as schizophrenia or a debilitating depression can't even function in life. And I think also there's a stigma that comes with weakness. I think if you look at the majority of our population, sometime throughout our lifetimes, we're going to struggle with what they would consider a mild form of depression or anxiety. Um, a lot of people also have the misconception that um, depression or anxiety or any kind of a mental illness is something that is forever and there's no cure. And uh, with the right kind of therapy, with the right kind of skill development, the right kind of insight, um, many of these illnesses can be uh, curable and can be very, uh, they can have a beginning and an ending, so they're not forever. Finally, if someone is struggling and seeking help, what resources are available to them? Uh, here at Grants Pass High School, myself, uh, is the designated mental health provider, the student support counselor, they can always come to my 
to me directly in, in the counseling center. Um, they can also reach out to their counselor. Uh, we got an incredible staff here that are very um, supportive, so they can reach out to the staff if they don't feel like they can make it down to the counseling office. But we also have a wealth of community resources here for individuals and families that are struggling with these types of symptoms. So they're definitely available. How do you think the internet and social media play a role in mental health? What are some things people should be cautious, cautious about online? Well, I think there's kind of, there's a couple of layers to that. First, the internet has an unlimited amount of resources out there and information. And one thing you need to be careful of is, is self-diagnosing, getting on some website and looking at a list of symptoms and then deciding for yourself what you and or what a loved one has. Because um, again, now those labels can kind of become self-perpetuating. So it's important that you seek professional assessment rather than just turn to the internet. And then the second layer of that comes from uh, the way people interact on social media. And it's kind of at times a nameless, faceless platform in which people oftentimes throw out some of the terms we discussed earlier, OCD, bipolar, with maybe one intention, maybe another. But when other people read that on, online, um, who may be struggling with it or know somebody who does, it can cause a lot more problems than it might have intended to. So be, you got to be careful about what you're posting in general, but specifically when it, when it is regarding mental health.